Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for September 28th, 2022. I'm teaching a series entitled Pursuing Grace-Based Success. I know that you want to be a success. If you're watching this, obviously you want to put, the, put that in the chat. I am a success. You can say that by faith. I am success. I like to say that I am success going somewhere to succeed. So you want to be a success, but we want to be a success God's way. We want to pursue success by his grace for his glory. We want our life to be all about him. We want that when people read the story of our lives, that Jesus would be the star on every page, right? And so we want to be a grace-based success. Well, I'm not a, a, a self-made man. I'm a God-made man. I didn't pull myself up by my own bootstraps. It was the grace of God. So this is Pursuing Grace-Based Success, part nine of the series. The title of today's message is The Desire and the power. God gives you the want to and the can do. I know that I spoke to this yesterday, but I'm going to come back to it again today. Some people can put in the chat, God gives me the desire and the power, or you could say, God gives me the want to and the can do, right? So he gives me the want to, he helps me to want what he wants for my life. And then he gives me the can do. He empowers me to do what he's calling me to do for such a time as this. God gives me the desire and also God gives me the power, get ready to receive the word. So I made this statement yesterday that God gives you the design and the power. We looked at Philippians 2 and 13 yesterday, and um, I, I did some teaching on it, but I didn't really break it down, break it down like I wanted to break it down. And so as I was meditating on it this morning, I was like, man, you know what? Uh, even in thinking about the fact that God gives us the desire and the power, I see the grace of God all over it. So let's teach it. Let's talk about it. See, one of the things that I, I, I'm, I'm very thankful that God has graced me in such a way to where I'm not, I don't. I'm not a preacher that could just say, you know, look at your neighbor and say, God gives me the power, you know, whatever. God gives me the desire. High five somebody, say, God gives me the desire, but then not explain it. So I, I, I can, yeah, I like to use like phrases like this and I do, I know how, how to get people fired up and all of that. But then my, my real gift, my real grace is to then explain it, is to then break it down in a way that you can understand and apply it to your life. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to explain it this morning. Y'all ready? This is going to be good. So let's go over our foundational scriptures, Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. The Bible says, I mean that you were saved by grace because you exercise faith. You didn't do anything. You just believe. You didn't save yourself. It was a gift from God. You're not saved by the things that you've done, so you don't have anything to boast about. But in Christ Jesus, God made us new people, a new creation, so that we could spend the remainder of our days doing the good works that God had before ordained for us to do. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 30 and 31, the Bible says, God has united us with Christ Jesus. Say, I'm, I'm united with Jesus. Now, once again, put, taking the spotlight off of us, putting the spot is all about him. It's not about us. Now, this is what happened. This is what the text says. Once you're united with Christ Jesus, for our benefit, God made him Jesus to become wisdom itself. So I, ha I have wisdom from above. Say, I get wisdom from above. Okay, why? Because I'm connected to Jesus. Now, because I'm connected to Jesus, Christ made me right with God. So I'm right. Say, I'm the righteousness of God by faith. So I'm the righteousness of God. So I have access to wisdom. I have access to righteousness. God put my sin on Jesus and Jesus's righteousness on me. And because of Jesus, God made me pure. Say, I'm pure. Because of Jesus, God made me holy. Say, I'm holy. Because of Jesus, God freed me from sin. Say, sin has no power over me. So all of this happened in Christ Jesus. So in Christ Jesus, I have wisdom, I'm free from sin, I am pure, I am holy, and I'm righteous. Therefore, verse 31 says, you have nothing to boast about. It's not about you, it's all about him. Jesus did everything. All we do is we get united with Jesus. So, uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 9 says, God saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own works, but according to his own purpose and grace. So God gave us a, a purpose and the grace for the purpose. God gave us an assignment and the grace for the assignment. He gave us both in Christ Jesus. He gave us both in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. That's what 2 Timothy 1 and 9 says. <laughs> so, I mean, like, and, and I've unpacked that. 
Now, Philippians 2 and 13 is something I shared with you yesterday, and this is where we're going to labor this morning. The Bible says in Philippians 2 and 13, new living, for God is working in you. Say, God works in me. God is the one who's working in you. He gives you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. It is God who is working in you, and God gives you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. The easy to read says, yes, it is God who is working in you. He helps you to want to do what pleases him, and then he gives you the power to do it. He So God, say this, God gives me the want to and the can do, right? So God gives me the desire to want what he wants for my life, and then he gives me the power to do it. So let me break this down. I, I'm going to break this down the way that God uh, has anointed me to do it. So what does it mean for you today? I have three things to share with you this morning, and as I get into these three things, I need you to open up your heart to receive. Y'all ready? Three things. Number one, here we go. God gives you the desire to do what he planned for you to do from the foundations of the world. I don't want to just make the statement. I want to teach you, right? So let's get into it. So Ecclesiastes 3 and 11, I read this for you yesterday, but I'm going to further elaborate today. So Ecclesiastes 3 and 11 from the Amplified, the Bible says, he, God, has made everything beautiful in his time. So in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, the Bible says that everything is going to happen in, in your life at just the right time. So there's a time for this and a time for that. So God has made everything beautiful in its time. There's a time for everything and things will manifest in your life at just the right time. The, the, the thing is, that you I've told you a million times that the promises of God have a timing component. So you have to know what God said, but then know that it's only going to manifest at just the right time. So he goes on to say, Solomon, he, God, has also planted. So Think of a, a, a sower sowing, right? He, he, he planted eternity in men's hearts and in men's minds. So God is a sower and he sows something from eternity in my heart and in my mind. The text says it becomes a divinely implanted sense of purpose working through the age, ages, which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. So this, this divinely implanted sense of purpose, God puts it in from eternity in my heart and in my mind. And when he does, it becomes a divinely implanted sense of purpose working through the ages, which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. So let me explain that text to you. You were born for God's specific purpose, for God's intended purpose. God sent you to this planet at just the right time. Remember, everything happens at just the right time. So God sent you to this planet when he did and where he did because of why he did. He made plans for you before the world began. Now, when you were born, you were born ignorant of the fact that you were born destined, that you were destined, right? So, so when you were born, we were all ignorant of our destiny and we were unaware of God's plans. So you were ignorant of your destiny. You were unaware of God's plans as a result. You live your life like a human, like a mere human. And what do humans do? Well, then you just, you pursued whatever you thought was right. And, and your mindset was shaped by a lot of things. I've, done, I've taught on this before, but your, 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 your paradigm, your mindset was formed and developed, shaped by your environment, your education, your experiences, and the credible authority figures that you had in your life. So your mindset was shaped, informed, developed, by your environment, <laughs> I grew up in East New York, Brooklyn, uh, by your education, by your experiences, and the credible authority figures that you have in your life. These are the people that you gave license to speak into your life. All of those people and the environment, education, experiences, all of that shaped you, right? Who, who you became before you got born again. Now, when you came into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and you were born again, you were filled with the Holy Spirit. So now here you are, you're born again, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, but you already have a mindset, you already have a framework, you already have a paradigm, you already have an identity, all of those things, but now you're born again and you're filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit at this point begins to reveal to you what was prepared for you, but concealed from you. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit at this point begins to reveal to you what was prepared for you, but concealed from you. And so now you, you, you're like, man, now what do I do? Right? Because now I have to like, do I receive what God is revealing or do I receive, do I continue to go down the path that I was going before I got born again? 
And so that's why Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, but you try to hold on to your old life, it's not going to work. You have to give up everything because the life that I have is better. So while you're living your life out with the, within the continuum of time, God is outside of time. I've taught you about this before too. So God is outside of time. He sees the plans that he made for you from the foundations of the world. Say this, God is in eternity and I'm in time. So we are in time living our lives out within the continuum of time. God is outside of time and he's in eternity. Now in eternity, God's plans for your life are on full display. They are in, on display in his heart in eternity. So the text teaches us that God implants eternity. Where? In your heart and in your mind. The, he takes things from your future. They are future to you, but past to him because you've already seen it. He's outside of time. You're in time. So these are things that haven't happened yet, but they were things that God planned for you from the foundations of the world. And the text says that God implants eternity in your heart and in your mind. Say God places his plans in my heart and in my mind. Say that, say that. Put that in the chat. So God implants eternity in my heart and in my mind in time. And when it when he does, the text says, it becomes a divinely implanted sense of purpose. Now I have a divinely implanted sense of purpose. Now I'm gonna live my life with a sense of purpose that is uncommon. Like, oh, glory, I know who I am. I, I know my divine, I know it. And so God, I live my life with this divinely implanted sense of purpose, working through the ages, which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. In other words, I will never be satisfied until I become what God implanted in my heart and God put in my mind. And God implanted eternity in my heart and in my mind. And I will never be satisfied until I become what God revealed. I will never be satisfied because I have this divinely implanted sense of purpose. I have to experience it. I have to become it. I, I, I know that I'm living in this world, but I know that there's something bigger on the inside. And it's like this world hasn't caught up with me yet. And so I have this internal, internally implanted, this divine sense of purpose, and I'm living my life from the inside out. And I'm meditating and I'm medicating on the word of God and the promises of God and the dreams of God for me. And I'm meditating and I'm medicating on it day and night. And it becomes the driving force of my life. When I get up in the morning, I know that my calling is calling me. Why? Because God implanted eternity in my heart and in my mind. And I have this divinely implanted sense of purpose. I go into to my prayer closet and I can see it. I'm going to my prayer closet and it's like God is putting it on full display and I'm in my prayer closet and I can see myself operating on a level that I haven't operated on yet. I can see myself doing what I know God called me to do, but it hasn't happened yet. I, know I can see myself operating on that level and experiencing and impacting and changing and glow. I can see it. I can believe I mean, it is so real to me. But then when I come out of it, I have to deal with the people down here in this world. And when I come out of my prayer closet, I have to deal with the, the realities of this present time. And so, 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 so now I'm like, oh my God. So there's this dichotomy where on the inside, I know that there's something greater. And on the outside, it hasn't happened yet. And it's like the earth hasn't caught up with it yet. And it's like the earth is on delay time. And so, so now God is showing me stuff from eternity, but I'm, I have to live my life out in time. And so to live by faith, come on now, come on, Brother Pena, teach me faith. To live by faith, 2 Corinthians 4 and 18, the unseen has to be more real to you than the scene. To live by faith, I have to be so convinced. I have to be fully persuaded of what I see in my prayer closet, where I go in there like, oh my God, this is great. And I come out and I'm living down here with the, these people down here in this world. And I'm going into meetings and conversations and Zoom calls and all of that. But I have to be so fully persuaded of the unseen that the unseen has to be more real to me than the scene. And so, so I have to go into my prayer closet and see what God is putting on display in eternity. And I have to go out and live my life out in time. And I have to be more in sync with that than with this. I have to be, I would rather be in sync with heaven and it seemed like I'm out of sync with the people down here in this world than the other way around. To live by faith, I have to be fully persuaded. The unseen has to be more real to me than the seen. Once you know who you are, once you know what God has called you to do, once you have this divinely implanted sense of purpose down in your heart, then nothing else matters. Your only desire is what God desires. Your only want is what God wants. You only think about the purposes and the plans of God for your life. You freely give up all the other plans. At that point, girl, what about this? I thought you was going to, no, girl, God wants me to do something else. 
Are you going to give that up? You worked on that for years. Yeah, I worked on that for years, but that was me. That wasn't God. Girl, I'm telling you, what God is telling me to do is better. And so, so I, I freely give up my plans. I freely die to self. I freely yield to God. I freely, whatever I had, whatever, if God, I only want what you want. And if it's not what you want, I don't want it. And so, so the things that I thought I, the, that I wanted, I'm really, I'm, I'm free. I, I freely give those things up. And so now, why? Because I believe what you believe about me. I'm convinced. But why? Because I'm fully persuaded. Because you deposited something down on the inside of me. And now it, it, eternity is living inside of me. And so now I, I have this, I will never be satisfied. Why? Because I, I have to become who God called me to be. When your single desire in life is to desire what God desires, when your single desire in life is to want what he wants and to, to live the life that he planned, then you will experience the favor of God like never before. Psalms 5 and 12 says that the favor of God will go before you like a shield. God will open up doors for you that no man can close, close doors that no man can open. He will raise up people to use their power, their ability, their influence, and their money to help you in ways that you cannot help yourself. Why? Because you are not living your own life. You are living the life that God planned for you from the foundations of the world. And I pray that you get to that point. I pray that, that you are fully persuaded. I pray that you get to the point where you only desire what God desires desires, when you only want what God wants, when you when you just want to believe what God believes about you and you don't want anything else. When you get to that point where I only want what you want, Father, if you want me to have it, I want it. And if you don't want me to have it, I don't want it. I only want what you want. I want everything that you want, but I only want what you want. When you get to that point and your life is all about him, I'm telling you, all bets are off. You will live the grace life. Doggone it. That was just number one. Glory to God. I got two more things to share with you on this morning. All right. So number two, along with the desire, say God gives me the desire. All right. You got it. So we got that point out the way. So along with the desire, God gives you the power to do. Say God gives me the power. So I say I have the grace to do it. So, so not only does God give you the desire, but then also God gives you the power. It, it, so, so he gives you the power to do it. This is important. Why is this important? Because if God gave you the desire for something, but then he didn't give you the power, he would be setting you up for success. You would spend the rest of your life pursuing something that you can never br uh, bring to pass. And then you would be, you would spend your life dreaming dreams that would never be manifested and you would die unfulfilled. Let me say that again. If God gave you the desire, but not the power, Thankfully, God gives us both. But if God gave you the desire, but not the power, you would be dreaming dreams, God-sized dreams all your life, and you would have all of these dreams, and they, they would never come to pass, and so you would die unfulfilled. But, but thankfully, God doesn't do us that way. Thankfully, the Bible says in Proverbs 13 and 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is the tree of life. Say this. Say this by faith. Say, my dreams shall be fulfilled. You know why I can say my dreams shall be fulfilled? Because my dreams come from God. I dream God-sized dreams. I dream I dream the, the dreams that God dreams for me. And so now my dreams shall be fulfilled. Why? Because I am dreaming the dreams that God placed in my heart. I know what it's like, look, on, on a personal level, real talk. I know what it's like to want something so bad that is the only thing you think about. Like I've been there before. And, and so, so I, I know what it's like to where you have this desire and you know you only have the desire because the desire came from God and God gave you the desire for it and you desire it and you're desiring what God desires. But I also know what it's like to be waiting on God and like, oh my God, Father, it's like I'm in a position where, you know, I can't make this happen. And so I need you to make it happen. I, I want it and I only want it because you want it for me, but I can't make it happen. So I need you to make it happen. And so I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be waiting on that for years, but say this, say this, my dream shall be fulfilled. If, if this dream came from God, God ain't going to do me like that. God's not going to give me this dream and then make me dream up about this thing for years and then not let it come to pass. It has to come to pass. I mean, that's not the, that's not the kind of God we serve. God gave me the dream. My dream shall be fulfilled. And so, so I, while I'm waiting, I'm waiting in faith. I have an everlasting hope. I believe that God will do what he said he would do in my life. Why? Because if you ever get to the point where you've been believing this thing, but now you don't think you're going to have it, the, the text says your heart is going to get sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. I have an everlasting hope. But if I ever get to the point where I, I think I don't have hope anymore, if I ever get to the point where, where, where oh, I don't know, I, I just don't believe it anymore. If I ever get to that point, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. This is where you can be born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, 
and fall into despair and disappointment and discouragement and even depression. So this is dangerous. As a believer, you don't want to get to that point. You want to have an eternal hope. You want to believe that if God gave you the dream, come on now, God is not going to do you like that. If he gave you the dream, it shall come to pass. It's only a matter of time. It has to come to pass. You must discern the voice of the Holy Spirit. And while you're waiting on God, you got to believe that God is not a man. He cannot lie. If he said it, he will perform it. If he declared it, he will make it good. I'm thankful that we serve a God that gives us the desire and the power. If he only gave you the desire, and he didn't give you the power. You would have this hunger, this thirst. You, you, would, you would be pursuing God and then die with this insatiable desire that never got satisfied and you would be unfulfilled and you would be unsatisfied and you would be incomplete. But let me tell you something. That's not the God that we serve. God gives you the, the desire and the power. God empowers you to do what you could never do without him. Philippians 2 and 13. Let me read it for you again. Yes, it is God who is working in you. He helps you to want to do what pleases him. And then he gives you the power to do it. So I want you to embrace the grace. Say, I embrace the grace. I embrace the grace to do what God has called me to do in this season. I embrace the grace to do whatever God wants me to do in order to bring to pass his perfect will for my life. I embrace the grace to walk out my divine destiny and my divine calling. I embrace the grace. And as I do, I know that my dreams will not I will not die unfulfilled and unsatisfied. It's not going to happen to me. I'm going to get out of me everything that God placed in me while I'm in the land of the living. Say amen to that. All right, number three, and finally, last point for today, the grace of God is truly amazing. As I was meditating on this, on this Philippians 2 and 13, last night and this morning, man, I thought about the grace of God. I thought about the, like, you know, the, the desire and the power. That's that's grace. Let, let me talk about it as I close. Think of, let's think about grace for a minute. Today, we're talking about the fact that God gives you the want to and the can do, right? The desire and the power. God loves you so much that he made plans for you before the world began. And then he works with you to want what he wants for you. Now, if God, God puts the desire in the heart, in your heart for you to crave for the things that he birthed you to do from the foundations of the world, and then it gives you the empowerment to do it. Both of those, I see the grace of God. Let me explain. If God gave you the desire, or let me say it this way. If God didn't give you the desire for the things that he desires, then the chances are high that you will spend the rest of your life pursuing your own passions, your own desires, right? Because at the end of the day, you only get one life, so you're going to try to go do something. So if God didn't put his desire in your heart, then you would have your own desires, you would have your own passions, and you would spend your life pursuing your own passions and your own desires, um, and, and you would basically get to heaven and realize that you missed out on what God wanted you to do because you never saw it. But thankfully, God puts the desire in our heart. Now, if God gave, gave us the desire but then they didn't give us the power, then we would be helpless because we can't do what God calls us to do without God. So here's my point as I close. God loves us so much that he gives us the desire and the power. That's the grace of God. That's unmerited. Like that, that is undeserved. That, that is the free favor of God where God says, you know what, son, daughter, I want you to want what I want for my life. So I'm going to work on you. God, God works with us. He tirelessly pursues us and tracks us down and puts his desires in our heart and in our mind. He wants us to desire what he desires for us. And then once we desire it, he gives us the power to go do it. That's the grace life. And that's how we're supposed to live. Say, I live the grace life. Say, say, I believe I receive everything God has for me. All right. So let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice. Man, God's grace is so good. Lift up your voice and declare this over your life. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about grace-based success. You want me to want what you want for me. You love me so much that you placed a desire in my heart to desire what you desire for me. You gave me the desires of my heart to the point where my desires are your desires. Mm. Now, my only desire in life is to do what you call me to do. I am on this planet for your plans and purposes. I bring glory to your name. I have no other desire. I have no ulterior motive. My life is not my own. I was bought with a price. 
So I live for you and you alone, Father. My life is all about you. You implanted your desires in my heart and in my mind. And I will never be satisfied until they come to pass. You gave me the desire and you gave me the power. Therefore, greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Tomorrow, there'll be another one. So please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, you want my notes, go to, my notes are free. Go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button and put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, I love you. God loves you more. Put in the chat. I live the grace life. Do me a favor. If this message was a blessing to you, leave me some comments in the chat. I like to read those. Share this message right now. Don't wait. Do it right now. Share it on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. Have an amazing day. I will see you tomorrow morning. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to learn more about our ministry or you would like to partner with our ministry, please visit ripministries.org. You will learn there what we're doing in the Caribbean, providing a Christ-based education to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic. We also provide them a hot meal every day. If you would like to partner with us, click on the donate button. All the donations are tax deductible in the United States. If you don't have my book, Level Up Your Life, go to rickpina.co and get the book today. From rickpina.co, you'll also see that I have journals and I also have some other products and apparel and etc. all centered around the grace life. And then lastly, if you enjoy this content, but you want direct access to Isabella and I, the Lord impressed it upon my heart for Isabella and I to start mentoring people, giving people access to us to be able to ask us questions. We're answering questions about ministry, about missions, nonprofit, for-profit. I'm addressing things as far as how I preach, our approach to preaching. We're putting out private content just for a specific group in the Patreon. So please visit patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina if you're interested in this material. Have an amazing day.